Hey, I'm Smitty Chad, and I'm going to show you how to build and optimize a simple SSTO in Kerbal Space Program 2. We're going to start out with the Raven cockpit and then add a small methane tank and one of the long, small methalox tanks to that. Then we're going to add our rapier engine and a nose cone on the back and clip that nose cone inside to help the aerodynamics. Then we're going to choose which wing we need to use. There's a lot of wing options, but we're going to try to use the small wing at first, just the small regular wing category one, and turn the root thickness down to 0.01 .01 and the tip thickness down to zero. Then we're going to make this kind of shape right here and check the weight. The weight with the small wing is 10.4 tons. Then we're going to put the small stabilizer part on and we actually save 140 kilograms. So we're going to be using the small stabilizer as our wing. Make sure that your center of lift is behind your center of mass, but not too far behind it. And I like to tilt the wings a few degrees upward. We're also going to empty out any monopropellant that we have sitting around in the cockpit since we aren't going to be docking with anything. Then we're going to add our vertical stabilizer slash rudder and set it to only control y'all. And then we're going to add a singular radial supersonic intake because that's all that the rapier needs to actually run. Then we're going to add our landing gear just behind our center of mass, make sure it's not too close, and then one in the front, of course. Then we got to set up that rapier engine to not cycle automatically. You can have it cycle automatically if you want to, but we're going to bind it to a key, which is going to be one. Then we're going to set up our landing gear. Turn auto suspension off and turn spring strength and dampening strength all the way up. And also turn off auto friction control on the front landing gear only, and then turn it down to something like 0 0.2, 0 0.1. And since we didn't paint this, we're greeted with the power of a thousand suns on our first test flight. A warp to a time that won't burn our eyeballs out, so we can actually get to testing this thing. And as you can see here, I'm going to start out with a very low throttle because this rapier has very limited air and we're going to watch that second little number over there, the air thing, to make sure we don't run out of air. Turns out this wasn't going to be a problem, but we did still take it slow anyway just so it wouldn't flame out. We pressed F8 and then pulled up the Aero GUI, which is going to give us an idea of how much drag we have here. If you zoom in here, that's the total drag, and then down there is the total thrust below that. If your total drag is ever higher than your total thrust with any aircraft, you're going to stop gaining speed. Again, press Alt plus F8 to pull up the cheat menu and then click on Show Aero GUI to bring this up. It's not a cheat. Don't worry about that. It's, it's a stock feature in the original game. It's showing you how much drag you have. It's a really useful tool, and uh, like I said, I wouldn't consider it cheat, so don't worry about that part if you're worried about bringing up the cheat menu. It's really not. But we get into orbit on our very first try with 409 Delta V, which is pretty respectable, but we can do better. We can do much better. To start, we're actually going to paint it so it doesn't blind us anymore when the sun's directly overhead. And then we're going to adjust the tilt on those wings, the angle of attack on those wings slightly. And then we're going to shrink the wings a little bit and give them a little bit of dihedral so they naturally want to stay level to the horizon. Uh, it gives us a lot more roll stability. Then we're going to click on this little box down here and get the 2D side view. And then we're going to line up our gear until they are completely straight and level with each other. You can have your gear one higher and one lower and then line them up here and then it will naturally just load up without bouncing or anything, which is what you want. You don't want to be bouncing all around whenever your craft loads up. It's just unprofessional. And the goal of this test flight is to actually test all the uh, little improvements that we've made and also check our uh, methane to oxidizer ratio once we're actually in orbit and see if we have anything left over because we're trying to optimize this as much as possible. By the way, that was about a 10 to uh, 20 degree ascent and we're not being as efficient as I possibly could, but uh, as long as we're doing roughly the same thing every time, we'll get a pretty good idea of how much Delta V we have. We have 700 this time, but our methane to oxidizer ratio is way way off so take about a ton or two of methane out of the ssto so we don't have as much methane in orbit we ideally need a four to one oxidizer to methane ratio so for every four tons of oxidizer you need one ton of methane so it really doesn't need that much methane on board this is solely talking about efficiency though if you want to fly around and have a more range once you actually re-enter this thing to uh, fly back to the ksc or something you can absolutely put more methane on board it's more like your payload at that point we take a very steep steep ascent around 20 degrees and then we get a pretty darn circular orbit, uh, 72,000 meters on one side and 75,000 meters on the other side. And we're left with over 900 Delta V, 929 Delta V in a low carbon orbit, which is pretty darn respectable for such a small little tiny SSTO. Rapiers are not dead in KSB2. They are very, very functional. Now, of course, we're going to land back at the KSC. And uh, right now, this is kind of weird. You might notice that I'm actually more or less flying in the upper atmosphere, we're pushing our uh, 
our landing point there farther and farther forward. And eventually, though, I do need to reactivate the uh, rapier engine there because we did undershoot the KSC. A quick little tip about re-entry heating with these small SSTOs, especially with the heat-sensitive smaller wings like this, is stay as pro-grade as possible and maybe use like aero brakes or your landing gear to uh, help slow you down and stay as pro-grade as you possibly can or you'll burn up. Now, on this landing, uh, I'm going to point down here to the little tiny indicator, if you can make it out. And we're pulling full up right here. I'm pulling full up on my uh, flat stick, and uh, we kind of stalled out. We had no pitch control here. We're a little bit nose-heavy, it seems, uh, both when we're fully fueled and when we're completely empty. Uh, I can't really tell which one's worse, actually. <laughs> so we ended up coming in a lot faster, which gives us some more pitch control. Um, we come in uh, over 100 meters per second, which is nearly not too optimal for landing anything, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess we're coming back from orbit. It's pretty self-explanatory that we should be going extremely fast. But, uh, we were able to finally bring this to a stop and a soft landing. I used the giant vertical stabilizer rudder thing on the back rudderizer, uh, to slow us down. And then we're going to add some canards on the front of this. Now, this is an optional kind of thing. You've seen it still does work. It just has a high landing speed. It's not the most maneuverable thing ever, but these canards are going to help it be the most maneuverable thing ever. We also move the wings slightly forward uh, a little bit uh, to adjust the center of uh, lift to center of mass. And we're not going to take it to orbit this time. We're just going to take it on a quick test flight and try to see what the turning circle is like and how responsive it is. I did a test flight before this to check the turning circle with the without the canards, and it was absolutely horrible. One thing I would change about this too is turn down the authority limiter on that uh, rudderizer thing in the back. That would help a lot with the touchiness of it. But uh, luckily though, uh, the turning circle with the canards was a lot better. It wasn't like a super maneuverable jet fighter or anything, but then again, this thing weighs 10 tons for which is crazy dense for its size. Um, and we're going to take it out for the last thing that I was worried about, which is the heating on those front canards and how they handle the uh, the atmospheric re-entry heating and stuff. They didn't even heat up. The wings heated up, but they didn't. So pretty good success in my book. We also emptied out every last bit of the oxidizer on this run just to see what the ratio was and just for fun. Turns out we had a little, little tiny bit of methane left after we ran everything, which I'm okay with. That just extends our range that we can land at the KSC from. That's all I've got for today, though. Let me know if I should turn this into a series showing gradually more advanced SSDO tips and uh, how I build SSDOs and go about them in both KSB1 and KSB2. If this video helped you, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more stuff like this, and I'll really, really appreciate it. That's always the best way to support this channel. Also, you can pick up the craft files in my Discord server for this video. But thanks again for watching. This is Smoothie Jed, out.